It's a common misconception that drinking eight glasses of water a day is enough for healthy hydration. But sweat consists of water and sodium, which means you need water plus electrolytes to stay properly hydrated. Thankfully, there are products like Element that have all your electrolyte needs covered. You can try Element Recharge Sample Pack by going to drinkelement.com slash speak for only the cost of shipping. Welcome to Speak for Yourself, sponsored by the Popeye's Chicken Sandwich. Mm -hmm. Marcellus Whitey looking better than him. Emmanuel <laughs> Acho with the dusty brown box of crayons. My dog, half-dressed, I think I still got you beat. You so. do? Black and brown never goes together. Name a team that wears black and brown. <laughs> ah, I got him right there. Speaking of teams, let's head to the NBA Finals. Let's talk about a champion in the making. Well, Giannis is one win away from leading his Bucks to their first NBA title since 1971. He leads all players in the finals with just over 32 points a game and helps seal game five with a huge alley-oop dunk. Giannis is currently the only player in the league, not named LeBron or Steph Curry, who is a multiple-time MVP. Acho, could Giannis be the face of the NBA? As much so as I would love for my dog Giannis. That face? To be the face of the NBA. No, not possible for him to be the face oh, of the NBA. You? Yeah, it's not possible, Selen. Why is it not possible? You can't be the face of the NBA if they can't pronounce your last name. Ooh. Let's call the spade a spade, y'all. We finna go places going on there? this show. We finna have to go new ones. Is Stephen A showing up? Oh, um, that sound a little different Stephen thing A is, I'm able to bob and weave because here's what I said. They can't pronounce your last name. Oh. It's not that you are incapable of doing things. Good point, good point. It is that they are incapable of doing it. Let's Whoever talk. the they is, you figure it out for yourself. Uh. Cannot be the face of the league if you cannot be related to. There's so many ways and so many layers, sell that we're going to go here, but why can Giannis not be the face of the NBA? Because the face of the NBA must be relatable. Mm. LeBron James. We know mm. LeBron James' mama knows mama's name. We know his wife. We know the kids' names. We know Bronny. We know Bryce. We know Zuri. We know the characters' names Zuri. from the Space Jam. We know all them cats. Kobe, the late, great Kobe mm, Bryant. Respect. We knew Kobe Bryant. We knew his upbringing. We knew why he knew so many different languages. We played at Lower Mary in high school. We knew his high school jersey number. We knew he repped a 3-3. Knew he was from mm. PA. We knew all that. Mm. Magic Johnson, we knew about Magic Johnson, know about Michigan State Magic Johnson, know about the college mm. upbringing, know about the legacy there. Larry Bird, the face in the 80s as well, mm. know about the great Larry Bird. We know how Larry Bird went to college, left college, went back to college. We know about that, know about the upbringing. We've seen the documentaries. Michael Jordan. Stop playing. We know about Mike. We know, and we know everything there is to know about Mike. We know yeah. about the tragedies. Well, <laughs> we know about all that. We also know about the tragedies that he had to face, that he had yeah. to overcome, the tragedy yeah. with his right. father. We know all of that. But Giannis... We know Giannis' mama name. I do. What's her name? Put Veronica. It Veronica? <laughs> yes. No, I, that's her American No, no. Name. See, that's the problem. Oh, God, no, you can't relate to someone if you keep I lying. I tried to help you, stop. I hate when people say, like, where are you from? And you say, it's somewhere small. No. I was like, food. No. Just tell me so why, he, no. Here is part of the problem. Just Veronica. Which is why Giannis <laughs> can't be the face. What? Because Giannis goes to what I go to. People always ask me. I got asked this at a wedding, I think, two weeks ago. Hey, Acho, where are you from? I said, Dallas, Texas. He was Nigerian. He said, no, where are you from? I said, oh, oh. Isu Kwato Abi State. He's like, a hand. I was like, oh, I see, I didn't know what you meant. Uh. There's so many hoops and obstacles uh. that we have to jump through yeah. in order to yeah. make Giannis the face. Okay. And I just think, if we're being honest, we're too lazy to jump through him. Let's just call him the Greek freak. Mm. We don't want to learn how to pronounce Antetokounmpo. We mm. definitely don't want to learn how to pronounce Ugo Adetokounmpo. We don't want to do all that. Let's just call him the Greek freak. <laughs> so because I think that we are intrinsically lazy and we don't necessarily, we don't want to try to have to work extra hard to oh. learn about Giannis and all these other things. Unlike LeBron, we know the kid from Akron, relatable, right? Grew up a uh, single parent household, hooped through college. Mm. We fo followed him through college. Jordan, like I talked about, we know the story. But Giannis, can't relate to Giannis. I can relate to Giannis, mm. Nigerian parents, First generation where he was born. He's first generation Greek. I'm first generation American. I can relate to Giannis, but we, the proverbial sports viewer in the, in that, of the National Basketball Association, can't relate to Giannis. And so <coughs> for that reason, no fault of his own. No fault of his own. I don't see Giannis being the face. I think it is fault of his uh -oh. own. But um, I'm going to answer the question first. No, he can't be the face of the NBA. And it's not because of his game. Because okay. if we, we can yeah. go into that conversation. Yeah. And it's going to be pretty simple. Giannis yes, is in the conversation of best player on this planet. He's not the best player on this planet, but 
if he wins this championship, certainly that bump is going to have him even higher in that conversation. Kevin Durant's the best player on the planet to me right now. The face of the NBA is still LeBron James. He's sitting there with Kevin Durant a little bit, but more Steph Curry, uh, middle America, guy next door kind of feeling. And then there's a baton that's trying to be handed because we see Steph Curry maybe not on the best of team right now, a little, a little long in the tooth. LeBron obviously long in the tooth sharing that experience with AD. We could talk about Kevin Durant, and a lot of people don't like his personality, even though I love it. They say he's a little too tidbitty. He gets into social media, into the weeds too much. And then there's that baton. It's like, who's next? And you would think it would be honest, mm -hmm. but they're going to be like, no, no, you got the way. Who go? Um, we going to hand this to Luca. We going to hand this to Trey Young. We'll hand this to Zion Williamson before we'll hand it to you because it's not just game. It's name. Mm -hmm. And if I look at this right now, there's a list in terms of followers on Instagram. Now, Instagram is not the best standard of rating, but, it can but be. it's an indicator. It can be. It's an indicator. Well, it can be and it can't be because I know some, some girls on there that got millions of followers. I'm like, she ain't did nothing. I know her. Me? I ain't got nothing. But the point is, it still can be a standard. You know who's number one? LeBron. Mm -hmm. Who's two? Steph. Three, Westbrook. Okay. Four, Kyrie. It's kind of standard issue so far. KD, five. James Harden, six. Chris Paul? Respect to the OG who's not LeBron, who's up that high. Number seven. This is where we got problems. Number eight. It's not Giannis. It's Lonzo Ball, bro. Mm -hmm. Lonzo Ball, not even the most famous dude on his team, if you really want to get into the Q ratings, which I have here. Uh, they did a marketing su summary of the 50 most marketable athletes out there. And six were NBA players. Zion. A.D., Luka, Steph, and LeBron. They didn't say Lonzo here. They also didn't say Giannis. Mm -hmm. That's the problem with Giannis in this conversation. His Q rating, his X's and O's are not the problem. It's his Q rating. So you Explain talk about that. Explain that. I just now learned what Q rating is. Mm -hmm. I know I ain't the smartest person mm -hmm. in the world, but I'm assuming that other people yeah. may also not yeah. know what a Q rating is. Welcome to Affluence, first of all. Thank <laughs> you. I mean, you've already passed me up, so I, I'm, I'm at an R rating, and you, what's before Q? You better know that for a dr drunk driving <laughs> test. They make you go backwards. Um, here's the thing. Q rating is kind of like a summary of you in terms of marketability, uh, impact on culture, all these things. Like, basically, how can we monetize you? But we use it in different ways, outside, really, of what your craft is. So Q rating is more of what are you inspired by what you right. do. Eh, that was a lazy way of saying it. Um, here's the way that I look at Giannis, and I'm going to go back at some of your points. Um, don't be lazy. Don't use the lazy excuse also that since we don't know how to say his name, that we're not going to give him his proper due. I still mess up Luka Doncic because I used to say Doncic. Mm -hmm. People, Doncic. I don't give a damn. You know what I'm talking about? It's Luca. then. The point is, we'll make it where it's easy to say, Greek freak. Like, we ain't got to go through mm -hmm. all that. I still don't know I say Giannis's last name. You notice I never <laughs> say it, and I never will. But even me, I'm from America. Marcellus Vernon Wiley right here, L.A. People come up to me all the time. At a wedding. Where you from, Marcellus? L.A.? Nah, where you from? Oh, I didn't know. Uh, in my grandma's house, Palmer Block, Compton Crip. From mm -hmm. my, my other house, over here, over here, neighborhood mm -hmm. 60s. Like, we got... Giannis ain't the only one dealing with layers of where you from. I'm different than Giannis. But still, if people want to relate to you, they would take the time. They would take the travel. They would take the journey. But he ain't worth it because of his Q rate. I think... And they, I don't gangbang, y'all. That was just letting y'all know where <laughs> my family's from. Where. <laughs> Let, me with what, what, Let me start with this. Let me start with this. Let me start with this. Z-Y-X-W-V-U-T-S-R-Q-P-O-N-M-L-K-J-I-H-T-F-E-D-C-B-A. Let me start there. But you don't drink. I don't. I just have so to So you're wasting that I'm effort right here. <laughs> Give it to me. I'll put that backwards. I'm going to get that night. to you another day. Damn, that's um, dope. Now with that being said. What? I don't think Luca could be the face either. Stop it. And it comes down to this, Sal. The first reason you have to be a face is relatability. Tim Duncan was probably the best player in the league at least, what, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005? Nah, he had MVP. He had MVP. A couple times. And he, he had shares. It, it, you can't. Let me interrupt you just there. Go ahead. Go ahead because there's so many things that overlap. Like right now, Who's the best player on the planet? Probably KD. Mm -hmm. But who's the face? Probably LeBron. LeBron. So course. therefore, they start to rob from each other. In 2002, Shaq was still Shaq. He was. Now, Tom, Tim Duncan was Mr. Fundamental Killing, yep. but they're robbing from each other. When this conversation, who can Giannis rob to become the face of it the NBA? It has to be LeBron. And he ain't doing that. 
LeBron is, but is he not bounds in front of is, him. Is he not in the sense of this? Where's his space? Realistically yet? speaking, <laughs> if Giannis was American, fought, we followed his game through high school, uh, followed his game through college, uh, Giannis would for sure take the baton. Two MVPs before 26, about to be a finals champ, maybe if he closes out tonight, and a finals MVP before 26. Yeah. Incredible story from selling CDs as a youth to now dominating All the NBA. If, 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 what is keeping Giannis from – it's not that Giannis isn't likable in the media – Gives us great sound bites. I've airballed free throws. Mm. I've missed shots. Uh, I'm not scared of anything. Just gave us one of the greatest sound bites in recent NBA memory and a sound bite that we appreciated for. Not a Kawhi sound bite where we kind of made fun of him. A sound bite where we were all collectively like, wow, Giannis, like that was incredibly intellectual. The only thing stopping Giannis from being the face is the fact that He's not American. Mm. Like if you, we got to call a spade a spade. I don't think that's that not it. Luca would be the face either because I don't. I think it comes down to how much have we known you and followed you for forever. That's why Lonzo got all them followers. Let me give it to you. Lonzo got all them followers because we knew him in high school and we watched his game in high school and then we watched his game in the league and then he had his own shoe that mm. was his own brand I got of those. shoe. Yeah. Um. So when, when I look at it, Giannis, the first check to become the face is. Are you relatable? relatable. Okay. Here's and Giannis has a big, eh, you're not relatable because, eh, you're not from here. Well, no, he's not relatable because he doesn't sell himself. Help us I'll help sell. you. Uh, but that's it. That's everything to me, so how can, how can I help you yeah. help me yeah. if I'm searching yeah. for the words to say tinkled? Yeah. It was cute yeah. when my dog couldn't, didn't know how to find the word. But I can't help you help me yeah. if I need you to help me yeah. speak to you. Okay. Yes, you can, actually. Talk uh, to first me. of all, when I used to train my dog, Moo Moo, rest in peace, um, I didn't say tinkle. I said pee-pee boo-boo, and it worked, and people liked that, and it got me a lot of friends. A lot of ladies. Um, here's the thing. You got to know how to talk it if you're going to walk it. Talk here's the thing. You keep thinking relatability really starts an origin that we all from the same place. No, because right now in the heavyweight division of boxing, I bring this as an example, not a track example for once. Um, there was a guy by the name of Anthony Joshua, who's mm -hmm. not American born, right? Now, you look at him, you like, oh, where are you from? And he's like, oh, you from, oh, you're a British boxer. Wow. He's also I don't Nigerian. Know. Huh? He's also Nigerian. Got to claim him. He's Nigerian too? Oh, okay, even better. To my him. point. And it is still, we clamored to him. He became the biggest thing in boxing. But not the face. But not the face because he lost. <laughs> but, oh, he was the face. Trust me. He was in position before the loss. To Tyson Fury, who? Uh, he wasn't uh, taking over Floyd, though. You know Hold oh, on, no, I'm not talking about that. Now, okay, Floyd, okay, a whole okay. different animal. Okay. Floyd, the machine, and Floyd retired. So we talking about, like, who's the face of boxing? It was poised to be him. He was in that position. Now, his game took him out of that position. He's trying to climb back up that mountain. My point is, we'll go out there and find. Right now, you can say it's Canelo. Well, you got a little advantage being a Mexican boxer. But the point is, you don't have to be American-born for us to respect you in any sport. Wait a second. Well, let, me, let me bring you to go this. Ahead, go ahead, bring it to me. Let's talk about game when we talk about Giannis. If you are two-time MVP and defensive player of the year, and you still got this much room to make up, Guess what? A championship ain't going to close that gap, big dog. It's going to allow you to move up a peg or two, but move up against who? Lonzo? <laughs> Chris Paul? Yeah. AD? Lucas? Steph? LeBron? Zion? Look at these names. He's right there with Paul George mm -hmm. in terms of followers. Here's the problem. Paul George is not even the biggest thing on his team. Here's another problem. Paul George is third. Fourth most popular in this city alone, let alone the face of the NBA. He just has too many hurdles in front of him. A lot of them self-imposed. People don't want to hear substance. That's part of my issue. <laughs> I like to talk from substance. Forget <laughs> sizzle. And I understand I got a sizzle part of me. I keep it to myself. And when you hang out with me, you'll see the sizzle part. But for the world to see and consume it, for my kids to digest, I ain't got no sizzle for you. I'm not got, I don't have a hot take. And that's the honest problem. He gets to the mic and actually talks in substance. And people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to hear a little bit more. Step in it a little bit more. Sell yourself a little bit more. But when you're that close to the vest, you're not selling yourself. Okay, there are layers here. But there are layers. let me start here. In a sport that is not a, an American sport, you don't have to be American to be the face. Okay. Usain Bolt was a face of track and field. Okay. Track and field's a global sport. Boxing, global we sport. We show UFC, it, global we sport. We show claim We them, claim though. it, 
But well, realistically speaking, well, then basketball's not. It's a Canadian sport. You want to go there? No, I want to go to the oh, Aspen, you go? the National Basketball Association. We claim we're world champions, but we're really just talking about the 32 teams in the NBA, yeah. which are predominantly American state teams. And Can- <laughs> exactly, the state champs, <laughs> um, a nation United champs, states. if you United will, state champs, nation yeah. champs. I get it, yeah. um, but boxing, I do think you can have a okay. non-American face, like yeah. track and field. Yeah, I give you that. For me, for though, sure. sell it. A lot of it does boil down to, we had a conversation yesterday on air. We can pull it back if we want. Mm. You, you were said it jokingly in jest, but you were like, America's going to win the Olympics in basketball. No, I'm serious. <laughs> and you're like, back, because back. our backups are better than their starters. Yep, most teams. Yep. Because we do feel like we're better than everybody else at everything else. Well, Americans, I it's just the case. Funny. Some stats to prove that we're better than a lot of things. Some is just we confident, we cocky, say what you will. Yeah, fake it till we make it. Why would you, not you, the proverbial you, okay. want to make the face somebody who's not American? If we intrinsically Americans believe that we're better than other people, why yeah. would we want to claim somebody who we are intrinsically believe we're better than is the face? Oh, there's a, there's a dichotomy there, there Sal. There because is. If the Greek basketball team can't be as good as us because they Greek. So those Greek, the Giannis and then those people can't be as good as us because oh, they're not American. Then how, why, not even how, why would we dare make him the face? There, there's never been a non-American born face of the NBA. There hasn't. Not Magic, not Bird, not Jordan, not Kobe, not Shaq, not LeBron. That's just kind of going through the large scale faces. It's not that there hasn't been an Akeem Elijah one. And mind you, Akeem played college ball at the University of Houston, so at least we knew him in college. It's not that there hasn't been a Dirk and Whiskey. It's not that there hasn't been a Steve Nash. It's not that there now hasn't Canadian. been a Giannis. Give him love. The facts. The <laughs> fact of the matter is, for whatever reason, the non-American born players mm. never ascend to becoming the face. And it's not for lack of game. There's got to be another reason. Okay, and I, I just don't think that that reason is what you're saying. But I, I will give you that. There's no history to support what I'm going to say. That's in part not because of what I'm about to say. It's because, hey, non-American players, have you been number one? First of all, look at the errors you just gave me. Let's mm-hmm. go back to the 80s. Yes, sir. Magic and Bird ate up the 80s. 90s, Jordan eats up the 90s. 2000s, it's like Shaq and Kobe, Duncan, maybe, wherever you want to go. Point, Iverson. Dog, it's like, it's not a conversation of we don't want you there. It's just, it's like the pyramid of success. The, the most room is at the bottom. There's very little room to even be at the top. But with they these were players. at the top, though. But they were, and they're also American Nash, players. Nash, Nowitzki, back to back to back. Three, four, three non-American born MVPs year uh, after year after year. Yeah. How come no love? Giannis, Giannis, why the no Joker. Love? Because there's questions of should they even been the MVP in some but of those. Why? And I tell you why. Come, why? Because Steve Nash wasn't the best player. Ask Kobe that year. Okay, I'm not gonna do this because that's a whole different conversation. I want to do this. Now, I love that conversation. I'm not trying to avoid it. It's just, it's not because they're Canadian. It's not because you're not from here. It's just because somebody from here, we just got bored of giving them the trophy a little bit. Let's say this. Here's your conversation I think you're trying to have. You're trying to have an American power conversation. Like, Americans don't really want to export the power and give it to someone else because then that will make us look bad or lesser than. Now, you know this. Maybe not thought of this. When it comes to real power... People think power is when you can control yours. That's pretty much for most people a goal, ambition. But the truest, the biggest power is in delegation. The biggest power is when you can control others. When you ain't, I don't even know you, dog, and you're going to do what I want you to do because I got the power. Now, in your circle of influence to control that, that's great. That's a high degree of power. But there's a degree greater than that. Controlling people that you don't even have anything in connection with. So I think America's cockiness that we're having a lot of conversations about will be fully flexed if we control others. If we say, hey, yeah, you could be the face of the NBA. You're still working for us. Globally spreading the message, spreading the game. Here's why I say the best for last, I hope. Here's why Giannis can't be the face of the NBA. Because America does not respect the slow burn. We respect a who that. Mm-hmm. Think about a who that versus a slow burn. I'm a late bloomer. So it took me a long time to get my proper due. A lot of late bloomers. I talked to Tony Romo about this before, and he, I saw him witness this. He was a late bloomer in terms of his NFL prowess. Let's look at these guys on this list. It's, tell me if he's a late bloomer or not. Zion. Nope. He who that from hell mm-hmm. on. Who that? Who that big old microwave refrigerator out there bouncing? Uh, Luca. As soon as we caught our eyes on him, who that? Oh, he's been pro since 14. Damn it. Steph, 
Now, that's a slow burn. That's why he gets robbed. Ah, you're making my point. LeBron, who that, right? (sighs) Westbrook, slow burn. Slow burn. Back up at UCLA. You're making my point. Wait, college makes him a slow burn? Oh, yeah, because soon we catch noticing. That's why Lonzo was like, who that? Because his daddy, his shoe, one year, bang. Now we're like, where he at? (laughs) What is he doing? He's not living up to it. This is how difficult the terrain is to become in the face of the NBA. Now, Kobe, who that? Mm-hmm. 16, 17 years old, you hear about it. The guy, everybody you name, Shaq, everybody who we really name without another name has always been a who that guy. All these slow burners, they struggle. Even Steph Curry, who's the greatest of all slow burners. That's good. Coming up, I told you I say the best for less, I hope. Reports say Aaron Rodgers turned down a huge offer from the Packers. <laughs> we'll tell you what that says about the reigning MVP. But first, game six is tonight. But is there more pressure on Giannis or Chris Paul? We'll answer that next. Oh, speak for yourself. Name a slow burner that's the face. Getting recommendations from your friends for that perfect diet might be a big waste of time. The real answer is already within you, your genes. What are the best foods based on your DNA? What foods have the nutrients that you need? How quickly do you metabolize caffeine and alcohol? Don't guess. Use the code speak for yourself for $20 off a Geno Palette DNA kit. Find out how to eat for your genes. The Bucs can win it all tonight if they get one more win at home. Now, Giannis and Chris Paul are both going for their first NBA titles. Giannis is leading all players in the series, scoring in just over 32 points a game. On the other side, CP3 Suns are trying to avoid losing four straight games. Ugh, never thought about it that way. Joined by NBA analyst Chris mm. Broussard. But, Sel, is there more pressure on Giannis or Chris Paul tonight? Oh, there's more pressure on Giannis. Um, I think there's more at stake for Giannis. And I'm saying that because in Chris Paul's case, uh, he is who he is. Now, I think there's a bump. I think there could be a bonus to Chris Paul's legacy if he were to pull this series out and win a championship. Yes, but he's still in the conversation of the top five point guard all time with an 18-9 and nine average. So anything else would be gravy to Chris Paul. Obviously, he wants that gravy to go on his resume. But when you talk about Giannis's resume, this is a guy who doesn't get his due. We just spent 20 minutes, it felt like, talking about the projection of Giannis potentially being the face of the NBA. Here's the problem. Forget face of the NBA. That's being ambitious. How about him just get his due as a two-time MVP and a former defensive player of the year? He still doesn't get the same reverence and respect you deserve for a guy who has that on his resume. So that's why this championship is so important. Because I've talked to many of champions, as you have, Chris Broussard, as you have, Acho. The one thing they all say in common is... They can't take that away from you. Like everything else, we just had an off mic argument about former MVPs, and I'm going to say it. Steve Nash, boy, people over here questioning your MVPs, big dog, but I got your back because my wife Canadian too. So I know that's how it goes. Every other award, we all get to the barbershop. Y'all do at least. I need to go. But all y'all get there and just stay up all times of the day and night arguing about who got this, who got that. Now, we try to argue championships, but the problem is you can't take that away. That ring is that thing. So in this conversation, Giannis needs it more than Chris Paul because it's going to add something to his legacy that's a void that is not necessarily the same for Chris Paul. So I think the pressure is on Chris Paul tonight, and it's because of something you've now drilled into my head. Oh, equity. Chris Paul has no finals equity, Broussard. He has no finals equity right now, Sal. Chris Paul's finals balance is sitting at zero. If he has a bad finals game tonight, we'll look at him like, man, he had a terrible series. He had 15 turnovers over the course of three games. He had a 10-point game. His stats diminished over the course of four consecutive games until he had a decent game five. Chris Paul's finals equity is terrible. But Giannis' finals equity is through the roof right now. He gave you two 40-point games. He gave you a 30-point game. Gave you a 26- and 14-point game. Played off a hyperextended knee and started off with a 20- and 17-point game. Giannis could literally go out, have five, five, and five, and we'd be like, eh, still having a great series. Hmm. Whereas Chris Paul, let him have anything short of 20 points. Let him have uh, upwards of three turnovers. Let him have less than 10 assists. And we're looking at Chris Paul like, 
this is what you had to give us in the finals? Giannis is playing to a degree with house money right now. Two 40-point games back-to-back. He didn't do that all regular season. Playing with the hyperextended knee already proven his toughness. Plus just won a game on the road and is leading the series. He playing with house money. When you're playing with house money, you can afford to lose a hand or two because you'll still be up. But if you Chris Paul... He done got beat down to his socks. They already took all this bread. Now he took his watch off at the table and was like, look, you're just holding this collateral. Chris Paul got more to prove tonight. Mm. <clears throat> Man, I, I think Acho was a, a little hard on Chris Paul. Yep. But I do agree with you that there's more pressure on okay. CP3. As simple as this, guys. One of them's in a do-or-die situation. Okay. The other is not. Chris Paul can't live to see another day if he loses tonight. He has to win or he has lost his best chance ever to win a championship. Giannis can come out tonight, play great, play poorly, whatever the case. If they lose, he's still got game seven to go to. And they know in the back of their minds in Milwaukee, we can win in Phoenix. We've done it before. So for that very reason, the pressure is on Chris. Also, Chris is 36. Giannis is 26. All right, even if Giannis loses this series, he's still got a decade left to win another championship or multiple championships. Michael Jordan hadn't won a championship at 26. Neither had LeBron or Shaq. All right, so he's got plenty of time left. And oh, by the way, over the course of that decade he'll have left, LeBron's going to retire KD's going to retire. Kawhi's going to retire. Like, a lot of the people that are keeping him from winning rings will be gone. So Giannis has time. I agree with you, Acho, that uh, obviously Giannis has been better. I mean, he's had the two historic 40-point games. He had the iconic block, the iconic alley-oop. Like, his stock has risen in these finals. But I don't think Chris has been nearly as bad as you say. Mm. I mean, he's averaging 21 and 9, 52% shooting. Last game, 21 11, one turnover, 10 points in the fourth quarter. He's had some bad plays, the bad game for a period, and then the, the foul on Giannis on the alley oop. So he's, he hasn't been as good as Giannis, but to say he's been horrible, I, I think it's a little far, but I'm rolling with you on the pressure. Uh, no, I'm not rolling with the, on the pressure, but I am rolling with Acho in terms of his exaggeration. He's giving Giannis a little too much of that sauce, and he's putting a little too much of that bad sauce on what we've seen from CP3. Let me be real. Giannis, imagine uh, Giannis and the Bucks not winning this series. Imagine how all the conversation switches all of a sudden into, damn, all those points, and they were empty calories. Because, look, he came up short. Imagine we start to look at all of a sudden the 4-6 and six record in conference final games that Giannis has put up so far in his career. Imagine we start looking at him in career record playoff series and say he's only 6-5 and five before this series. So there's a way where we can all of a sudden navigate back to where Giannis is not enough. We're not there now because they're up 3-2 in this series. But since they're up 3-2 and Phoenix is down 2-3, all of a sudden, here comes Acho exaggerating and giving Chris Paul the business. Even though Chris Paul has played more minutes in this series than he did in entire postseason average, more points per game in this finals than the entire postseason, more assists per game, in the finals than he did in the entire postseason average. Higher field goal percentage and higher three-point percentage. Damn, I don't know sports that much, but if I were a smart man who had actually played, I would say that Chris Paul is being better in the finals than he was in the rest of the postseason. But that's not the narrative right now. Here's another narrative I want to throw out there why there's pressure on Giannis, because he doesn't want to go into the empty calorie conversation, and he also doesn't want to get into this conversation, because let's be real. We still one big toe of Kevin Durant away from not even talking about Giannis right now. I remind y'all that will come back up in the barber shop. I remind y'all a lot of people are sitting there like, was this the easiest road for a champion in modern times? The most all-stars injured on that road to greatness, Giannis? And no one is talking dynasty right now for the Bucks, in part because people don't trust Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday as the number two and three 
to make this a dynastic team. So this is his Dirk Nowitzki year. This is your Dallas Maverick. Go get your ring and shut up. Because if you don't, Giannis, oh, welcome to the Terror Dome when everyone's healthy and reloaded going forward. Sal, so, you're making it complicated, <laughs> but it's truly simple. Because Giannis is a max player regardless of what happens tonight and regardless of what happens in Game 7. He's still going to be a super max player, whereas Chris Paul is trying to vie for one more long-term max contract. And he only has six of them. He ain't tripping on seven. That's great, but ain't everybody always tripping on their bread as <laughs> long as they're allowed to count it. <laughs> so, as talking about pressure, it's easily Chris Paul tonight because he's the dude who's still fighting for coins. Giannis's coins are tied up. They solidified. He's still going to be maxed. Chris Paul, on the other hand, we got debates later on in this show. Is Chris Paul worth a long-term deal? Oh, Should the Suns commit to Chris Paul long-term? We're not asking those questions about Giannis, in part because he's locked up, in part because he's been balling. But Chris Paul's getting those questions. Chris Paul wouldn't be getting those questions if they were up 3-2. If they were up 4-0 and won it all, if they were up 3-1, but instead he's being asked those questions and the only way he can answer those questions is by a win. The pressure comes with the dollars as well. Chris Paul, he has those dollars in question. Hmm. Now, Acho's right there. I mean, we've heard talk about Chris wanting a three-year, $100 million contract. We've heard talk that, well, if anybody offers him that, the Suns can go up to four years, which no other team can do. I mean, you lose this finals – uh, I'm really not trying to go there. We'll get into that later. Mm -hmm. But Marcellus, remember, the question was tonight, not in I this series. Even if it's the series, I still think the age and all that put more pressure on Chris. But, yeah, you're right in that there, if they lose this series, there is definitely going to be a negative for Giannis. All right, he's going to hear about it. There's no doubt about it. But here's what he's got. Here's the trump card for Giannis if they don't win this series. Does he have a, an Anthony Davis, a Kyrie Irving, a Dwayne Wade, a Steph Curry, a Chris Bosh, a Klay Thompson? No, he has none of those. So at worst, what you have to say about Giannis is, okay, he couldn't do what LeBron didn't do what KD didn't do, what so many other great players didn't do. He didn't win it without another superstar. He's got that in his back pocket that I didn't win it, but go get me another superstar and I bet you I win it. So that always will be there for Giannis if he loses this series. I get it. I get it. Look, I had to go to long play because right now it's a do or die. So it's already a red question. Like, we'll, we'll, more pressure on the one who's about to die or the one who's going to live. Like, eh, the hell we doing? So let me talk a little deeper into this. Are you an outcast? Here's the thing. I don't want to hear a money conversation. Don't ever do that to Chris Paul. Chris Paul has made $344 million on the court of basketball. Now, he's done it in 17 years, but it's still a higher <laughs> average than Giannis. $146 million. He getting close to what I made, damn it. So, hold on. Giannis going to make his money. He better make his money because he ain't made his money. Chris Paul like, man, I'm trying to get $100 million one more time. Rob that ass while I'm at the end of my career because that's what we do at the end of our careers. Point being – that you can't do this, Acho. And I think Chris was leaning my way, but then Chris had to answer the question. One bad game for Chris Paul this series and two lowlights has made everyone cloud and color his entire series like he has been messing this up. I mean, game four, we give you that, that unforced turnover. Come on, Chris. And game five, why you fouling Giannis on the dunk? Let it be. Because then y'all went down four, made it two possessions. This is all kind of problems come out. You opened up Pandora's box. But those are two plays. And then it's all in totality one bad game. Why is it being colored like Chris Paul is the issue when Chris Paul has been more than Chris Paul this entire postseason in these finals? None? Okay, I won. Coming up, Aaron Rodgers apparently turned down a whole lot of money from the Packers. His former teammate Greg Jennings will help us sort it all out. That's next. Don't speak for yourself. Leave your speechless up here. The most anticipated reunion of the summer is here as John Cena returns home to SmackDown. Summer of Cena on Friday night. SmackDown. 8 Eastern, only on Fox. I'm getting that gig. Up, Shanks. Training camp starts next week for the Packers, but there's no guarantee Aaron Rodgers will be there. 
But there is a new report from Adam Schefter that the Packers offered their quarterback a two-year contract extension this offseason that would have, quote, tied him to Green Bay for five more seasons and made him the highest-paid quarterback and player in football? Hmm. Rodgers declined the offer. Proof is not about the money. That's what they're saying, Nacho. What do you say? Does this say about Aaron Rodgers? I think Aaron Rodgers is confused, um, so at least – the reason I think he's confused is because I'm confused. Huh. And the only hmm. reason I'm confused is because hmm. nobody has properly clarified what it is that Aaron Rodgers wants. Hmm. Everybody on Twitter, well, clearly he wants more receiver help. Uh, clearly he wants more defensive help. Does he? I'm not convinced. Schefter, one of the most plugged-in people, he on air to, uh, went on air today hmm. and said, I'm not really sure what Aaron Ra- Rodgers wants. I think X, Y, and Z. But Schefter, one of the most plugged-in people in all of the NFL, doesn't know exactly what Aaron Rodgers wants. So I'm confused. And if you think you know what Aaron Rodgers wants, you're wrong because he hasn't told you either. <laughs> I'm not convinced he's told Packers management. People have said he wants a new head coach. Does he? The head coach is 26-6 and six in and his they, first two years as a starter. Winning. Two NFC Championship games. Winning. Last time he got Mike McCarthy fired, Mike McCarthy left going 7-9, and nine, if I'm not mistaken, or was 6-9 and nine prior to being fired and relieved of his duties. Huh. He doesn't want more money. Does he want more receiver help? Maybe. But he has the best receiver in the game. I know he helps Devontae Adams be the best receiver in the game. Does he want more help at the running back position? Maybe. But he has a top five running back in Aaron Jones. Does he want more offensive lineup? Maybe. But he has David Bakhtiari. Does he want more defensive help? Sure. But they were a top 10 defense last year. Number nine has two elite pass rushers, has a great lockdown cornerback in Jair Alexander, has a great uh, safety in Darnell Savage. I don't know what Aaron Rodgers wants. So Mm. what does this say about Aaron Rodgers? To me, it says that he is confused. And why does it say that Aaron Mm. Rodgers is confused? Because we, the people, are confused. And the only reason that we are confused about what Aaron Rodgers wants is because no one has told us and made it clear. We all have our guesses, Mm. but our guesses are exactly that. Guesses. It says to me, Sal, that there's just a whole bunch of ambiguity. Man, you don't took the top off this one. Uh, look, I try to rock with people all the time, at least publicly, because I respect people's opinions. I respect their experiences. I respect what they're saying. They have a voice. And then privately, I digest what they just said or what they're doing. And then I come to the realization that I often come to, which is I shouldn't have wasted my time listening to these fools because everyone has a voice, but some should be on mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a DJ. Oh, yeah, talking to that mic. Nobody else hearing that junk. That's sometimes how I feel when I hear stories like this. Now, that's how I wholly feel and wholeheartedly feel about this one with Aaron Rodgers. Woo! It's hard to separate the signal from the noise in this one because the signal should be the declaration of what Aaron Rodgers wants. But it's not. It's lost in the noise because it's all noise. What do you want? I swear I don't understand these dudes. Let me be Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> First of all, I was me. Marcellus Vernon Wiley, and I was able to dictate terms. I was able to get what I wanted. I told you, for one year, I didn't even practice. Now, could I have practiced? I don't know. I never got to that place. I had an understanding with the organization. He worked itself out. That's lowly little old me. Aaron Rodgers, you can't get what you want. Oh, brother, that is a you problem. I always tell people, don't let you get in the way of your money. I'm going to say it again. Don't let you get in the way of your money. In sports, it's a transaction. I don't understand why you bring in any more attributes, emotions to this conversation. And if you are, you must declare what they are. If not, I'm looking at you like, what are you talking about? But this generation, this social media, everyone has feelings and a voice and wants everyone to hear them because they want to be heard. I keep telling you this one. Stop being disruptive without a destination. Okay, it's fine. It's cause noise and bring havoc. Where are you going with it? Ah, so this report didn't really move me because I thought it was a little hollow. Not talking about my man, uh, uh, Adam Schefter here. I'm talking about what it said. It said money. Now, I've had good contracts and I've had bad contracts. (laughs) Boy, they could put some money in there to impress the fans and impress the fan base. And to you and to your CPA and to your agent, y'all sitting there like, that's not it. Uh, Colin Kaepernick's contract comes to mind when it was impressive in headline. But then when you dive through the details, you're like, wait a minute. That's not the money that they're advertising. I'm not certain if they offered him a contract that was hollow or not. So I'm not going to be moved by this report. What I'm going to be moved by is what you said. If this gets public, you either have to correct it 
or you're going to have to direct it. If you can't do either of those, why am I following this conversation fully? Because I can't separate signal from noise. Got to bring in former Packer Fox NFL analyst Greg Jennings. Oh, Greg, you know Aaron Rodgers. Let's hear this, Greg. What does this report say about your boy Aaron Rodgers? Well, listening to both of you guys, I agree with both of what you've said, specifically you, Acho, because for me, it's not about the money. But whatever it is about, we have yet to actually find that out. And so with that, and we've talked about this all offseason, no one truly knows exactly what it is. And so for me, understanding the psyche of Aaron Rodgers and being in the locker room with him, knowing how he ticks, what makes him ticks, he is a a individual that is highly driven to succeed. He feels like he has what it takes within himself, his own possessions and attributes, and he feels like he potentially have not been given the support around him. That has not been spoken specifically out of his mouth. Mm. It's been kind of tiptoed around with some of the things that he's alluded to. However, I do know this. The one thing that Aaron Rodgers has not gotten is what he wants and how he wants to see it played out in Green Bay. Also, what we do not know is what he wants and how he wants to see it played out in Green Bay because he has yet to speak on that. And so that's where I feel like there will always be constant confusion as you talk about, Acho, because Aaron Rodgers hasn't declared what exactly it is we're all trying to figure out and we will never know until he decides to share it. Yeah, I'm with y'all. I don't think I don't think that the core of this issue is him being confused. I think the core of this issue is him not wanting to fully address the issue at hand. Now, that's not confusion. Confusion is which one is it? I think he knows what it is, but he doesn't want to fully address this. And I'm going to give you a parallel to give you an example. Russell Wilson sat there at the Super Bowl with his wife, Sierra, sat there next to Roger Goodell and all of a sudden start texting. Start going into his feelings and came out of that Super Bowl spazzing, ready to go to war with the organization and the team, and et cetera. And it reminds me of Aaron Rodgers' situation of how that game played out against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, a game where, you know, it was in the balance for a second there, a game where we were like, Green Bay can pull this off. And there were some controversial decisions made, whether it was Aaron Rodgers, whether it was his coach, or whether it was a lack of communication. But the blame game started, and we all saw it in the post-game press conference all the way through the offseason. So I'm not so certain if this is a confusing argument for Aaron Rodgers. I think this is more of do you swallow the fact that you – had a contribution to your own demise, kind of like Russell Wilson. Do you finally swallow that, hey, some of this is on you? Now, my ego is huge, but it's not a superstar's ego because I've never been a superstar. But I can imagine what a superstar must go through because you hear it so often that it's not you. And then when it is you, you are kind of reluctant to say it is me. And I think that's where we are with Aaron Rodgers. So I, like I've been saying all offseason, will expect to see Aaron Rodgers on the Green Bay Packers suited up week one. If anybody else wants to argue that, I'm here to listen. But you're not really standing on solid ground because if you're trying to take Aaron Rodgers for his word, how solid is that? You just said he's confused, Acho. So as expected, as norm, He's going to suit up and ball out. Well, the reason I don't think he will is because there can be no resolution. So there can be no resolution as long as Aaron Rodgers does not state what he wants and what he needs in order for there to be a resolve. Aaron Rodgers gave us one primary quote this offseason about the situation that wasn't Mm. facetious. He gave us truly one talking to Kenny Mayne. I'm going to read it verbatim and y'all let me know how confused you all are. Hmm. With my situation, look, it's never been about the draft pick, picking Jordan, so it's not about the draft. I love Jordan. He's a great kid. We we have a lot of fun working together. It's not about Jordan Love. Love the coaching staff. Love my teammates. Love the fan base in Green Bay. An incredible 16 years. It's just kind of about a philosophy and maybe forgetting that it is about the people that make the things go. It's about character. It's about culture. It's about doing things the right way. Gee, you played in Green Bay. 
He just said it's not about Jordan Love, and it's not about drafting Jordan Love, so that's out the window. Aaron Rodgers has said he loves the coaching staff, so it's not like he wants a new coaching staff. That's out the window. He says he loves his teammates, so it's not as if he's unsatisfied with his roster and his teammates, so that's out the window. He loves the fan base, so it's not about the fan base. That's out the window. So what is it? It's just kind of about a philosophy. Whose philosophy? Because typically it's the coaching philosophy. But Aaron Rodgers, you just said it's not about the coaching staff because you love them. So now I'm confused. Contradictory. You said maybe forgetting that it is about the people that make the things go. It's about character. It's about culture. Well, who sets the culture? The coaching staff. Unless it's about the owner owners. But the Packers don't have an owner. They have an ownership group. I am confused <laughs> because everything Aaron Rodgers you said you love, you conversely say you have a problem with. There's no solution because Aaron Rodgers is making this entire thing extremely complicated. You got Twitter, you got Instagram, you got YouTube, you got Snapchat, you got TikTok, Aaron Rodgers. There are a plethora of platforms for you to say what you want. Just say it and everybody can keep it moving. Just don't go on TikTok, though. <laughs> yeah, but one of those one of those groups that that you didn't hear and that you didn't specifically hear him mention was the most important pieces in Green Bay right now because they don't have ownership. That's President Mark Murphy oh. and General Manager Brian Gutenkoos. And so when you say, yeah, it's not about the draft pick. Yeah, it's not about the draft pick, but it could be about the draft picks that has never happened over the course of the tenure there. It's about philosophy. Well, who establishes the philosophy? Those who are at the top. The coach then brings on his philosophy and they partner and develop a marriage. And then it's agreed upon because he's only hired by those who are already in place. Those who were already in place have removed a lot of the pieces that Aaron Rodgers feels like should have still been there. And the Jordy Nelsons, the Randall Cobbs, Mm -hmm. the list goes on and on and on. And so when I hear that, What I don't hear is the thing that I pay attention to most when we're talking about Aaron Rodgers, because he's not going to speak directly. He's going to speak around. And that's typically what I'm hearing when I hear what you just expressed, all of those other groups. But he didn't mention those two important pieces, the president, Mark Murphy, Mm. general manager, Guttenkoots. That's what I didn't hear. So that's where I feel like the Mm. issue is at hand with those those individuals. Got to use deduction here, huh? At least it's not him saying they're not treating me right because, boy, before you start speaking, Greg, I was about to go land there, and I hope it's not that. Oh, and missing pieces like a Greg Jennings as well. This just reminds me of my experiences. Yesterday I went to the supermarket as I like to go weekly with my son, and he likes to grab the snacks, and I like to watch him grab the snacks. I don't know why that's such a bonding experience for us, but it makes me feel rich to see my son want some $3 little cupcakes and I can get them for him. Here's the thing. Every time I go to the supermarket, it feels like this happens. You get to the front of the line, you're almost there, you're putting your stuff there, somebody in front of you, and then they just start spazzing, start talking. You're like, hold on, this is transactional. Either buy the stuff or get your ass out of line. Like, I don't want to hear any other parts of this conversation. I'm just looking at Aaron Rodgers as I'm sitting there with my little man, and I'm like, dude, either buy it or go. Either do or die. I don't know what else you can say in this moment that's going to satisfy us all. Hopefully this is satisfying you. Get your ass out of line. Coming up, Chris Paul could be playing in his last game with the Suns tonight. We'll tell you if Phoenix should be leery about committing long term. That's next. Don't speak for yourself. Nothing else to talk about. Chris Paul and his sons are in a must-win situation tonight. If they lose the series, CP3 will become the first player to lose four best of seven series when his team had a 2-0 lead. Paul has a player option for just over $44 million and can become a free agent in less than two weeks. And he is 36 years old. Chris is back, but I choke. Should the Suns be leery of committing long-term to Chris Paul? Absolutely not. Um, Don't be leery about that. Fellas, y'all know I'm a gambling man. And one thing you have to live by if you gamble, you cannot win the lotto unless you buy a ticket. Mm. The Phoenix Suns may not win an NBA title this year, but the only way you have an opportunity to win a title is if you get to the title game, if you get to the NBA Finals. Chris Paul is the Suns' lotto ticket. It may not be a winning ticket, but it's a ticket nonetheless. And again, if you want to have a shot at winning, you got to have a ticket in your hand. Before Chris Paul showed up, the Phoenix Suns were not a good basketball team and have not been a good basketball team in roughly a decade. 
Chris Paul shows up. Instantly, the Phoenix Suns land themselves as a two seed, find themselves in the NBA Finals, albeit there were some injuries that they got the pleasure of um, benefiting from. So mm. you commit to Chris Paul long term, not necessarily because you know you're going to win a chip. Nobody really knows they're going to win a chip. But at least by having Chris Paul on the roster, you know you're going to be competent. You know you're going to be able to compete. And all you can hope for in the NBA is to be able to compete night in and night out. Because as long as you can compete, then you can compete for titles. I think the question is what's long term. Uh, win or lose this series – I'm comfortable giving Chris two years, you know, but three years at big money. And I'll give him two years max money. Okay. That's two years, huge money. I'm a little, I'm leery of three years. I'm certainly leery of four years, but two years, max money. Look, he's 36 years old. This is a guy who before the last two seasons, he's been injury prone. Now, you don't generally get healthier. He has played basically full seasons these last two years, but the three years before that, he missed 20 or more games every year. And even this season, he was injured in the first round. They thankfully got through that, and then he got healthy. So he's older. He's injury prone. He averaged 16 points a game this year. Guess what? That was the lowest he's ever averaged since his rookie year in 2006. So two years, if we're talking long term, give him two years, I can do that. And you helped us out, Chris, got us to the finals, got us from basketball Siberia. I'm willing to overpay you and max you out for two years. Anything beyond that, I'm a little bit afraid of. And I'll get back to this when my next time around, but there's more to say here. Yeah, I will be leery as well. Um, I think a lot of focus is on him being 36. But remember, if you give him this deal, he would be going towards 40. So a 39-year-old, 40-year-old version of Chris Paul is what you're still going to be paying. Takes me to my baseball talking days. Uh, you get those big deals, 10 years, and everyone's like, yeah, pay him when he's 27. Then it's like, yeah, you're going to be paying him when he's 37 as well, coming down the hill. In this situation, I don't want to pay Chris Paul based on his resume, based on these numbers at 39, 40 years old. Let's just be real about this. So if you're assuming that this team is not going to win this championship, then it becomes a focused conversation on the individual player. You're like, okay, you got us this far. Now, how far can you take us? When you start to focus in on that, is Chris Paul making that conversation easy or is he making it difficult to have? I think right now it's been a roller coaster ride in terms of perception, in terms of some of the numbers, and what you're going to decide on. Lakers series, he wasn't that great. Denver series, he was amazing. Then all of a sudden, the Clippers series, up and down because of Corona. This series, even though he's better by the numbers, those miscues, those low lights are going to come back to haunt him potentially. So I had this conversation uh, with, uh, golly, it was, a, it was a leader, a civic leader who talked to me about people who want to protest. And he was trying to describe it in a way that I could digest it because I told him I'm not activist. I just act. And he was like, ah, no, no, no. You got to know the difference between one who inspires and one who leads. That's taking me to this conversation about Chris Paul. He inspired the Phoenix Suns to get over the hump. He inspired and helped them and led them to get over this hump. But now is he, like Chris Broussard said, two, three years going down the line, still the leader on that same journey? It feels a little short of that. It feels like, yeah, give me all the inspiration. Give us the mentality. Give us your mojo. Give us your veteran presence, your genius. But then we'll take it from here. On top of that, you can look at some of the numbers in terms of contract situation. That's going to make it ugly as well. Think about if he opts in, which he says he's not going to opt in, try to get the $100 million. But just imagine if he did opt in. Him and Booker would take up 60% of their cap space. Don't forget DeAndre Ayton, Mikael Bridges, both on rookie deals, eligible for rookie extensions this summer, up to five years, $168 million. Doesn't look like it's enough money to go around. And if it is, is it going to lead them to a better place than they are right now? Yeah, I'm rocking with you, Marcellus. And here's the other thing. When they sit down with Chris, they got to let him know, look, this wasn't a one-way street. 
yes, you definitely helped us. You helped us get over the hump and go from not making the playoffs to making the NBA Finals. And we'll see, maybe winning it first time in our franchise history. But we helped you out too, mm-hmm. all right? Because it wasn't like people were breaking down the door to get you this summer. Some people wanted you, but your stock was lower, all right? And we started improving before you got there. A big part of our rise came when DeAndre Ayton got back from the 25-game suspension last year in January, December. Then we started playing well. We were 8-0 in the bubble without you. Okay, so you weren't our – obviously, it's arguable that he's the best player. I mean, Devin Booker's the one really balling. Mm. All right, so you got to let Chris know we don't – it's not just you helping us out. We've helped you out too. You've got a coach that you love, that you vibe with. You've got players that respect you and listen to you. Do you want to go to New York? Because that's where a lot of the talk is that they're going to be the ones to throw big money at them. First of all, their first choice would be to get Damian Lillard. But if they do throw big money at Chris, let's say for argument's sake, they were to give him three years, $100 million. Do you really want to be in New York, Chris? Three years, $100 million? Yeah, you got money, but they're going to be expecting a championship. And you probably can't deliver it. And New York is great if you're winning. And it's not so great if you're losing or not living up to expectations. And then, yeah, they'll have more money under the cap so they can go out and get another free agent. But our veteran stars that will help you win right now, are they really going to be bending over backwards to go to New York to play with CP3? I don't know because the places Chris has been the best leader was Oklahoma City, bunch of young boys that grew up watching him, idolizing him. Phoenix, bunch of young boys that grew up watching him, idolizing him. With the Clippers, he had some trouble because they were veterans his age that didn't want to be yelled at. All right, so (laughs) I'm not sure you're going to get the star free agent in New York to join you to try to win a championship there. So Chris has, look, Phoenix got some leverage too, and he's better off in Phoenix than he would be just about anywhere else, and they have to let him know that too. Yeah, you make some tremendous points there. Um, Chris Paul makes an immediate impact every single team. Acho and I have talked about that at nauseum. Talking about how when he first gets there year one, oh, you're going to see the increase in terms of wins, in terms of outcome. But what we didn't talk about, which I'm going to illustrate right now, is year two, Chris Paul. So think about this year, immediate impact. All of a sudden, the Suns are in the playoffs, not only in the playoffs, in the finals. We'll see how it plays out. But year two, let's use some of the resume against Chris Paul. And this will certainly come up in negotiations. Clippers, year one to year two, we saw a decrease in points per game, 20 to 17, and your three-point percentage. How about with the Rockets? We saw a decrease from year one to year two, points per game, field goal percentage, and three-point percentage. Uh, We went from 65 wins to 53 wins. We went from the conference finals to the second round exit. Interesting. Could we still be on that same path, that same trajectory? All I know is Chris Paul's not getting any younger, and this conversation is not getting any easier. Coming up, Giannis can win his first title tonight, but could he also be the face of the NBA Part 2, the conversation? Let go. Ah, uh, Hugo will answer that next on Speak for Yourself. No, not that great. Mm-hmm. Giannis is one win away from his first NBA title. Leads all players in the finals with just over 32 points a game and helps seal game five with a huge alley-oop dunk. Giannis is currently the only player in the league not named LeBron or Steph Curry, who is a multiple-time MVP. So, Chris Broussard, who's back with us, could Giannis be the face of the NBA? He can be one of them. Um, And winning this championship, if they're going to do that, that won't make him the face of the league. But it could put him in position to be one of them. For Giannis to become the face of the NBA, he's going to have to turn Milwaukee into a dynasty. That's the only way. He, He will have to win so much and be so obviously the best player in the world, like Michael Jordan was, that he just becomes the face of the league because he's so dominant. And on top of that, He does have a good personality for it. We've seen in these press conferences in the finals, he's winning people over with his comments, his humility, his honesty, his transparency. 
I like it. And I think a lot of Americans like it. And so if he went, it's not a personality that where you win one ring or you don't win at all, we're going to make you the face of the league because you're just so funny and all that. But it is a personality that is good enough, likable enough, where we will give you face of the league status. Like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was never the face of the league because Kareem, while the best player, was surly. You know, he, he wasn't that type of personality. If you look at the guys who've historically been the face of the league, Dr. J, um, and Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, their style of play, the grace that they play with, the way they moved in the air, their body movements, it was so beautiful and graceful that we would make them the face of the league, all right? Then you look at Magic and Bird or Magic and Shaq. They had the colorful personalities, right, that they were funny, they smiled, they made us laugh, all of that stuff. Bird was the opposite of Magic. He was a white guy. He was in Boston. He was kind of carrying the torch for white America as a basketball player. So he could be the face of the league juxtaposed against Magic Johnson. So LeBron James, we've known about him since he was 15, 16 years old, cover of Sports Illustrated, American rags to riches tail. Plus, he does all the stuff off the court. He's got a gregarious personality. So those are some of the necessities for being the face of the league. Giannis really doesn't have any of those, but he's got a personality that's good enough where if he dominates the league, he could be the face. One ring, though, won't do it. So you've told me the what, Chris Broussard, but the answer that I'm trying to get to is the why. Why can't Giannis be the face of the league? And I look at it for a couple reasons. Why does he have to work so much harder? LeBron was the face of the league before he had won a chip. He was the face of the league before he had won multiple MVPs. He was the face of the league, and he had done significantly less than Giannis had done. Now, you said a personality that has to make us laugh. You said we've known about him since he was a kid. That's being LeBron. You said LeBron had the American rags to richer story. I've said this before, I will say it again. I think that Giannis will struggle to be the face of the league in part because he is not American born. The reason we're so familiar with the highest profile players in NBA history is because we're familiar with their games since high school. Kobe Bryant, we knew where he went to high school. We knew his high school jersey number. LeBron James, we've watched his high school games selling out arenas, um, albeit Michael Jordan. We know the testaments and testimonies of his high school years all the way up to UNC, et cetera. But when you're talking about Giannis, we knew he sold CDs. We, 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 we knew he had a, a rough upbringing from being first generation born in Greece, Greece. The reason that Giannis can't be the face of the league, the why, I think has a lot to do with the cultural component. It's not a matter of talent. Two-time NBA MVP. Why isn't he the face of the league already? It's not a matter of game. You see what he's done and how he's performed in the finals. Why isn't he the face of the league? It's not a matter of he hasn't been on the cover of NBA 2K. It's one thing to be the face of a video game. It's another thing to be the face of a league. I think the reason he is not or would not be the face of the league is because there is a lack of familiarity with him. And he has an unnecessary obstacle to have to overcome because we're not familiar with him because he was not born in America. I don't think that's the reason. Um, we do have a lack of familiarity with him, but it's because of him. Um, he doesn't sell himself. Uh, Chris just said it, but Chris didn't even catch himself saying it. Giannis has a good enough personality. That ain't going to get this. <laughs> to be the face of something, the face of the NBA, you got to sell yourself. I'm going to give it to you like this. In, in our world, we all know there's a line item and it's split between how we do our job. It's one, how well do you do your job? Just analysis, breaking it down, whatever sports we're talking about. And then being real, there's also the entertainment value. Now, there's some people that are bigger in this game because they lean heavier into entertainment, into selling themselves more so than breaking it down. Now, me, I start from breaking it down and then I work my way to entertainment. That's a slow build. <laughs> I'm just telling y'all, it's a steady eddy. That's why I ain't went nowhere, but it's a slow build. People will uh, leapfrog me, leapfrog me, and then just go away. And I'll still be here. Tortoise versus hare. That's this conversation. It's rare you get LeBron and Jordan and Kobe's. And what I say about them is they have the game and they play well 
in the game within the game. Think about it. In terms of products, there's only a few Apples and Teslas out there that not only is it the best product, but damn, they sell the hell out of that thing in terms of marketing. So it's not man versus machine. It's man and machine. And I'm sorry, Giannis doesn't plug into the machine well enough. You can't be number nine on the Instagram list that has Lonzo Ball ahead of you. That means you ain't plugged into the machine well enough. Paul George is right there on your heels. His shoes are better than yours. His shoes are bigger than yours. Kids swear by his shoes. LeBron's, Curry, Westbrook, these are all shoe deal guys. I could keep going Lonzo Line item the line item. I'm not slighting him. I'm not talking about where he's from. I'm talking about he's here now, and he better plug in at a higher voltage, or he'll never be the face of the NBA. We need more time for this oh, producer, let's go. so I'm already just giving y'all a heads up. Um, so everything you're saying is correct. Oh, thanks. But it's surface level correct. Okay. You, we, we talk about you got to sell yourself. Got to sell it. In order to sell yourself, what must you do? You must speak in order to sell yourself. You cannot sell yourself non-verbally. Giannis has done all the non-verbal selling an individual can do. Two MVPs before 26. An NBA Finals appearance in which he is about to win a Finals MVP if he closes out tonight. Everything non-verbal that you can do to sell yourself, Giannis has done to sell himself. So what can you do to sell yourself verbally? Well, you got to speak to sell yourself verbally. And from someone who grew up in a household with two languages, I understand the difficulty it is to try to sell myself in my second language. My second language would be Igbo, a Nigerian language, a dialect there. It's hard to do. So in order to sell yourself, I think a part of itself comes back down to a root of like Giannis is selling himself as best as an individual can sell himself. Mm -hmm. His talk at the podium was phenomenal. His, his, his joke about trying to find the word to say tinkling, we all laughed at. Mm -hmm. Everything that Giannis can do to sell himself, he is doing above and beyond. But still, he's not the face of the league. It's not a matter of talent. It's not a matter of nonverbal. I don't even know that it's a matter of verbal, but clearly there's a limitation. The reason Lonzo Ball has more Instagram followers than Giannis ain't because of talent. It's because we watch high school hoops and we watch NCAA March Madness hoops, which is where uh, Lonzo got the majority of his fame. If we was watching Giannis as a 16, 17-year-old kid, I would assume he would have skyrocketed in a following as well, and the skyrocket <laughs> of that following Perfect. also would have led to us making him the face of the league by now. I used to lean your way, Acho. Hmm. And I even said it two or three years ago. I said it. And I think it got to Giannis. I said, I don't know if he's got the swag to be the face of the NBA. That American swag, called that black American swag, whatever you want to call it, to be the face of the NBA. But then, and I hope you get a chance to respond to this. Then there came along a guy who changed my thinking on that, who was born in Africa who does have a gregarious Indeed. personality, who has the game. I think if Joel Embiid stays healthy and can win, Joel Embiid could be the face of the NBA. Now, I know, you know, all the same, you know, born in Cameroon, all that from Africa. We didn't see him play in high school. Didn't even start playing until he was 15. Joel Embiid has the personality. He's got this swagger. He makes us laugh. He's, he's just, he's, he's a great, he's fun. He could be the face of the NBA if the victories and the health that you need to do that come along with it. I got to hear you on that, Acho. I, I like what you're saying, mm. CB. I like what you're saying. My question then would be, Joel Embiid was second, I believe, this year in the MVP race. Joel Embiid has been talking, and we've known about Embiid for a long time now, but what Embiid does, which Giannis doesn't do, which Luka doesn't do, which several other foreign players doesn't do, is Embiid jumps an obstacle here. Akeem Olajuwon, we know, because he played at U of H. Embiid, if I'm not mistaken, he played at Kansas. So we began to familiarize ourselves with Embiid at a collegiate level. Then he comes in from a collegiate level, which we're familiar with. And at a pro level, he gets hurt. He's not hurt. He gets hurt. He's not hurt. And now he's starting the ball. But there's a level of familiarity we had with Embiid that we don't have with players that don't play in the collegiate system, which I think breeds them to being more of the face. It, to me, it's a matter of I like where you're at with Embiid because that's a good take. But there's familiarity with Embiid, at least from a collegiate level. There was no familiarity with Giannis. Because realistically speaking, if Luka, in my mind, if Luka was American-born, we would have been tracking with Luka collectively 
since he was 15 or 16 years old. I know you and guys like Slick Rick and other NBA analysts, y'all watched the Luka highlight tapes from Europe when he was 14 and 15. But if Luka was on the AAU circuit, we all would have known of Luka from 15 and 16 and 17. Luka would be the face right now. And period. First team all NBA. Two times in the playoffs back to back. Made buzzer beaters galore. Dropped 40 points and average 40 points in them. He would be the face, period. So why isn't Luka the face? And as I look at it, I'm like, huh, because we haven't followed Luka collectively for a while. Now, why haven't we followed him? Because we follow things that are local here in America. Last thing I'll say in cell, you can atone to this and attest to this. Yeah. We in America followed in track and field. Shakari Richardson is our face of the sport. Because we follow American things. Mm-hmm. She's not as our face of short sprinting, oh. right? She's our face of short sprinting. Shakira Richardson, I don't know why you're hooding. She has 2.1 million followers. Allison Felix has 800. Mm-hmm. So if we're going off followers, <laughs> like she's our face of the sport. Not our, yours. Uh, she's not mine. But oh, like, okay, well, she, she ain't mine. I collectively, <laughs> I like have, track too much. if you're looking at track and field as a lady, She's the only fan. one we know about. <laughs> exactly. And the, the we is not me and Marcellus. Right, the right. we is collectively <laughs> okay. speaking yeah, the yeah. larger scale of people. Yeah. But not the best. Definitely not the best from an international level, but we Americans keep up with American things. And I think Mm. that's a big problem that some of the foreign players Mm. will face as well. Man, y'all gave me too much to eat right now. I'm glad you asked for more time. Uh, Let me just start off by saying this. Respect to my Taekwondo teacher for my son, Master Kim, who is, I don't know, 90th degree black belt, whatever. Um, But there's something that we're dancing around called star quality. And you either have it or you don't. And Giannis doesn't have it. Let's just be real about it. Now, he got game on game on game, but he ain't got star quality. W- Want to make my point, Master Kim? No one knows about him. Bruce Lee? Everybody know about him. Jet Lee, Everybody know about him. Just, Master Kim will whoop them up. Respect to the dead. Here's the point. It doesn't have to be verbal. Those people, you don't have to climb the mountain verbally, as you said, Acho. But let's see how you can climb that mountain. Because Steve Nash is also a former two-time MVP, but was never the best player in the game. And that's why Steve Nash never got his flowers as face of the NBA, despite having that resume. I think Giannis falls into that same category. Whew, Giannis, you interrupt your own momentum. Same thing with Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid, the first year, didn't even play. We were like, damn, what's up with this dude? And then he starts shooting off on Twitter. We're like, he got star quality about him. Then he tried to holler at Rihanna. If that would have worked, oh, who knows what would have happened then. But the point is, star quality's already out there. Then the game comes, and we're like, okay, they have met. The elevators are both highly pitched. Here's the problem. He gets injured, off injured, and his team doesn't fully advance. So we're like, we're waiting on you, MB, because we know you got that star quality. Uh, this is why LeVar Ball became LeVar Ball. This is simple because he knew that, hey, there's a star quality to me. There's a star quality to my boys that I just need to plug into. Their game, let it be. We'll figure that part out. And that's the reverse engineering of what Giannis is trying to do. So if Giannis wants to really be the face of the NBA, he just got to keep going into that one bucket. Just keep doing your job, keep being yourself, and hopefully more people will buy into it. But we know in America, in our society, that's going to be the slow build. That's going to be the slow grind. And good luck. See if you make it. Coming up, Dak is back, and the Cowboys say they're ready to make a statement. We'll tell you if we're buying or selling that next on Speak for Yourself. Now, so Gary Richardson is what? He's for sure to face. Not to me, not to you, but to America. They selling her like Cowboys that. will have a lot of eyes on them. Tupac, all eyes on me. What they expect, the return of Dak Prescott and their appearance on Hard Knocks. Cowboys executive Stephen Jones, what's up, Dolph? Said he has a lot of confidence in the team with Dak leading it. He had a quote, our whole group is ready to make a statement and take the next step. That's right, Steven. My dog took care of me when I was there. So, Acho, are you buying or selling? My Cowboys making a statement this season. Man, first and foremost, I got to tell on myself, man, I'm so wrapped into this face of the league conversation. You really are. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> bro, the best conversations I'll be wrapped into, you bro. You in. know it's hard to change gears. I'm with you. Um, I'm selling the Cowboys make a statement this season. Uh, you still thinking about the other conversation there because you ain't prepared for this. No, I Buy am. Buy it. I am. Oh. I'm, here's why I'm selling it. Oh. The Cowboys made no major additions this offseason. Mm. Keanu Neal, okay. um, Dan Quinn as a defensive coordinator, That's and nice. their first six draft picks were defensive. But they made no, like, splash additions. No no Stephon Diggs like the Bills Good. did. No, no splash additions. You know. So what we're banking on is the Cowboys being healthy again. It makes a lot of sense. If mm-hmm. the Cowboys are healthy, they're a much better team than they were last year. Great. 
But if the Cowboys are healthy, then they're really the same roster they were in 2019. And mm-hmm. for y'all Cowboys fans, y'all should know this. I shouldn't have to explain it to you. For those loose NFL fans, 2019 Dak was there. Amari Cooper was there. Uh, Tyron Smith was there. Lyle Collins was there. Uh, Jalen Smith was there. Leighton Vanderish was there, albeit only played nine games. Zach Martin was there. 2019, Ezekiel Elliott was there. Michael Gallup was there. The Cowboys roster was the same. The difference was Jason Garrett and call it CeeDee Lamb, if you will, a big-time playmaker CeeDee Lamb. Mm. But is Mike McCarthy really shown us that he's that much better than Jason Garrett right now? Yes. The reason I ask... The reason I ask, he's had four consecutive losing seasons. But he okay. got this. He can put a Where ring yours on at? it. He can put a ring on Pat it. Chose <laughs> me, baby. Where but, yours uh, at? Mike McCarthy made three bonehead decisions in the first four games last year for the Cowboys. Cost the Cowboys games, I would submit. I Cleveland Browns, why are you running a fake punt? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Atlanta Falcons, why are you running two fake punts in the first half? Mike McCarthy made a lot of bonehead decisions. So <laughs> even if the Cowboys come back fully healthy, then I see them very adjacent to the 2019 Cowboys. The 2019 Cowboys were an 8-8 eight and eight football team. Woo-hoo. That football team did not make a statement. The 2018 Cowboys mm. were a 10-6 and six football team. Move that into this year, that's either 10-7 and seven or 11-6. and six. That's not statement-making. Can the Cowboys win the division, Marcellus? Yes, sure. Of course they can. Eagles, I don't think are very good. Washington is led by Fitzpatrick, and I'm not sure about Danny Dimes yet, Daniel Jones. But just because you win a division doesn't mean you made a statement. Where you get that from? Is that, is that what they call him, Danny Dimes? Danny Dimes. Damn, I did. I'm late to that party, boy, but I brought the most drink. I'm telling you that. <laughs> that is hype. Danny Dimes. Okay, I'm buying this, and I'm not just buying this because you know I got a, a love and adoration for my Cowboys. It's because they did make a splash this offseason. Dak Prescott's back in the building. I don't know if you have a pool in your Beverly Hills adjacent townhouse condo apartment sublease. I don't know what the hell you got. But the point is, if you have a pool, you know you start playing games. If you have some kids, you know this. It's not always about the cannonballs making a splash. Sometimes if you learn how to dive, no splash, but it's just as effective. And the Cowboys have no splash, but boy, did they make a splash. Dak's in the building. You know what he does to Ezekiel Elliott? Without Dak, Ezekiel Elliott averages 78 yards a game. With Dak, 108. Hmm. There's your splash. What about C.D. Lamb? Oh, he goes up 30 yards per game as well. What about Amari Cooper? 20 yards a game. What about Michael Gallup? 30 yards a game. All of these are increases just because Dak's in the building. Dak is healthy. But also the fact that if you look at the Cowboys and their defense, much maligned defense, but like you said, Dan Quinn's in the building. Also, the Cowboys' defense started to shore things up latter part of the season. I'm sure people phased out on them because they weren't a playoff team. But from week 11 to the end of the season, Cowboys started to turn the corner. Defense had the most takeaways in that span. Cowboys defense. Cowboys was 11th in scoring. Ooh, not bad. And the offense had the fifth tied fewest giveaways in that span. Why does all that matter? That's without that. That's what them basically like, this season over, but let's see what we have here. So if you look at it in totality, All of their star players play better because Dak's in the building. And they're on hard knocks, a team that loves attention, a team that's used to attention. All this is going to be good for the Cowboys. So they'll make noise, but they won't make a statement. You can make a lot of noise without making a statement. We saw a lot of that over the course of 2020. A lot of people made a lot of noise. But they didn't really make any statements. Mm. Um, no, I don't, I don't think they can. Because remember, so best case scenario. Let's go. Best case scenario. The Cowboys are going to revert back to the 18 or 19 Cowboys. Why Same roster. Do that? Same they, roster. That doesn't mean anything. Hold on. A quarterback away can change everything. Dak was there in 19. Oh, yeah. Dak but, was there in 18. But Dak is not the same as he was in 2019. He's better? Yes. Because in 2019, yes. he had a phenomenal season. He was on pace for 6,500 yards before injury. Who, Who knows what that pace, pace will fourth be? fourth in turnovers. Who, uh, yeah, exactly. And, and this defense was on pace to be in 32nd, and they all of a sudden finished 11th in the NFL in terms of pass defense. Go from 32nd I to 11th. Think, I you think can't correct. I think it's wishful thinking. I think, yes, the Cowboys should win the division if they would be my favorite to win the division winning okay. about nine or so games but nine and eight isn't a statement no to me a, to me a statement is 13 14 wins in a what 16 games 17, in a 17 games <laughs> right like thir- 14 13 and three. to four or something 13 to four you can't do that are you believe do you believe in voodoo 
hexes and all that? All right, good, because this hard knock stuff is not a voodoo curse. There have been successful teams that have been on the hard knocks. You guys are going to watch one this year, the Dallas Cowboys. Coming up, the Bucks are up in the series, but we'll tell you if tonight is actually a must-win game for Milwaukee. That's next on Speak for Yourself. Plus or minus nine games. Going up. Ah, the Bucks can close it out and win the NBA title if they win tonight at home in Milwaukee. Now, the Bucks have been rolling with three straight wins and are 9-1 and one at home this season in the playoffs. Giannis said, quote, we cannot worry about having plans of celebrating. None of that until it's done, close quote. Spoken like a true face of the league. Um, face of his home. <laughs> he ain't a man at home. <laughs> Boy, that star quality is a whole different animal, man. It is what it is. Sorry. I'm doing this topic because I have to. We know. But I'd much rather do if the I think they can hear as well. Take. Look at you. You can't even get the question So, Marcellus, yes, sir, sir, is yes. tonight a must-win game for the Bucks. No, it's not. I hate fake must-wins. Why? Because they're not must-wins. Like, I know what must means. I, I remember growing up, I used to be musty. But here's the thing. Must-wins means if you don't, what is the outcome? Death. It's not death for them. So it's not a must win for the game for the Bucks. Now let's go into the figurative speech of what must win is. Oh, if you don't win this one, then the next one will be so damn hard for you to win. So you better win this one. No, if I were a Milwaukee Buck, if I were sitting there looking at Giannis, who's not the face of the NBA, and I would say Giannis, our leader, not the face of the NBA. Hey, man, you know, we just beat him in Phoenix in game five oh, and they were favored to win against us in game five. So what's the difference if we lose? But we're not going to get into that conversation if we lose. But if we do, this game tonight is not a must win because they still can survive and thrive in game seven. I co-sign. It's not a must win, but the attributes that keep Giannis from being the face of the NBA are why they will win. Um, because Giannis is going to be so determined. And oh, <laughs> oh, that's how you win games. Determination. <laughs> when you're in high school with look, this. Sam, what, what, discipline, me, desire. Let me, let me They're on track. Um, it's not a must win game for every reason you said, and I can harp on all the reasons. But realistically yeah. speaking, the Bucks just went to Phoenix and won in Phoenix. Thank you. So they already know, even if we don't win tonight, we can still go beat y'all at y'all's house. Hey. And we've already beat a team as good as y'all, the Brooklyn Nets, in Game 7, on the road, mm. with a player who can score just as well, Kevin Durant, as you, Devin Booker. So mm. even if we don't win tonight, we can still go get that one. But the Bucs don't play with their food. Nah. So realistically uh-huh. speaking, I don't think they don't. First sell. two games of this series? That wasn't playing with their food. They I think that just... was Giannis hurt, and I think that was Chris Paul in his bag. Okay. I think that was Chris Respect. Paul rested, and I think that was Giannis okay. um, not fully healthy. But I don't see the Bucks having that we don't have to win tonight mindset. I think mm-hmm. the Bucks have that mindset of, yes, we understand that we can go win game seven, but in Milwaukee, let's go ahead and try to take care of business. Yeah, not a must-win game. More of a, a hell of want to win game. You know, and we've all been there. It's like, we difference. Do, right. We don't want to get into the position where we're playing with our food. Stop bringing up the Brooklyn Nets example, please. They played in game seven, the Brooklyn Net. They didn't play the Harden Nets. was healthier. He had yeah, one leg. The other one was like just there. It was the other one was just following the other leg. So that was Giannis, leading. who isn't the face of the league, can hyperextend his knee. That's easy. And come back. What would you but rather Harden play with? Go. For, former football – see, that lead back is your lie. I'm relaxing. I'm, no, I I'm know relaxing. You're lying. You're know. trying to distance I, yourself I from the truth. I would have rather hyperextend – I would have rather pulled my hamstring, so – a, a week or two weeks prior, then hyperextended my knee to the point where the whole thing is bent back completely. And you've had both injuries, and you're saying that, lying to the people? A hyperextension? Why do you think he came back so fast? So a hamstring, you can cognitively be like, okay, just don't go that hard, don't go that hard. Hyperextended well, knee, what, you what, might not be able to walk. So what good are you out there? A hyperextension is just inflammation. Everything st- was stable. Everything else is about pain threshold and then the stability. You're good. Hamstring, your booty is massage. affected, your knee is affected. Huh? Get a massage. Get acupuncture. Get <laughs> I acupuncture. Oh, I wish it was that easy. I'll still be playing. Speaking of the Suns and Bucks, tonight's game six of the finals is featured on the free-to-play Fox Bet Super 6 app. Scan the QR code below. Download the app and answer six questions about the game for your shot to win $1,000. Coming up. Oh, now I'm about to get excited. As Kyle Shanahan lives up to the hype for the 49ers. We'll answer that next. Don't speak for you, sir. Kyle 
Kyle Shanahan is set to enter his fifth season as the Niners head coach. Mm -hmm. But he has only won more than six games once in his four seasons with the team. Sports Illustrated says any reasonable person looking at his body of work and his team's history of injuries, quote, shouldn't be too eager to dismiss his one Super Bowl appearance as a head coach as a fluke. Oh, really? Shouldn't be? Well, watch this. So, Acho, has Kyle Shanahan lived up to the hype? So, yes, sir. Uh, he absolutely has. In, in the NFL, in theory, you should win a Super Bowl every 32 years. Statistically, that's what the heck should happen. Meaning you should go to a Super Bowl every 16 years. Kyle Shanahan went to a Super Bowl in his third one. That was very well done. It's just, you know me, so I just try to be, what's no, the you, simplest way? That the is The simplest simple. thing yep. is, he went to a Super Bowl in his third year as a head coach. Mm. The, the, the prior two head coaches, Chip Kelly and Tom Sula, they were 7-25 and 25 from 2015 to 2016. Worst record in the NFL over that span. Mm. Then Shanahan shows up. Some significant roster changes, obviously. You got a quarterback. Not that they didn't have a Super Bowl uh, quarterback on their roster and Kyle and Kaepernick, but you got a quarterback, Jimmy G. Went to a Super Bowl as a backup, won as a backup, and um, you had some additions in Bosa, et cetera. But for Kyle Shanahan to do what he did in San Fran as quickly as he did it, that is living up to the hype. The hype is you, you can't yeah. go to a Super Bowl every year. Not going to be Bill Belichick. That's no. unrealistic hype. But if you told me, and if someone told a 49ers fan, hey, we hire Shanahan, he'll take it to the Super Bowl in the first three years. Is that living up to the hype? You would sign on the dotted line immediately. Mm. That's what he did. I don't think he has lived up to the hype. Uh, one, let me keep it even simpler. He's a losing head coach. <laughs> 29 to 35. Okay. Oh, but he has this one world, this blip. I could actually say outlier. Anomaly is a word. Not as simple. But let's talk about how that was one season and the rest of the seasons don't add up to the hype. Also, let's talk about the fact that he's been a head coach or offensive coordinator for 13 seasons. And I was I remember when I was off, what was I having some procedure done? I don't know, my nose, my eyes, something. And you got on the big board and said that he is a offensive minded genius mm -hmm. guru, as you said. Right. Well, tell me if this is a genius and a guru of your 13 seasons. Your team has finished in the top half of scoring just four of those 13 seasons. So far, not living up to the hype. Now, let's talk about head coaches with at least three losing seasons in their first four years with a new team. Like my man, Kyle Shanahan. Do you know that Todd Bowles did that? He got fired after his fourth year. Gus Bradley did that, got fired after his fourth year. Mike Shanahan did that, got fired after his fourth year. Sperano, listen to these names that he's in company with. Ugh. Dick Jerron, Romeo Cornell, Mike Nolan, Don Capers, Bush Davis, Jim Swartz, Jeff Fisher, my man, Ron Rivera. Damn it. All fired, 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 fired. Resigned. Oh, Bush Davis, you smart. Anyway, the point being, what is he living up to, big dog? I think he's a guy who's pushing his chips all in the middle right now because he realizes and reads the writing on the wall that I'm not living up to the hype. I got Jimmy G there two years ago, highest paid player. Now I'm pushing chips all in for a rookie. Why? Because I need someone else to buy me some time and also to put my entire offensive load on. Good luck with that because by the numbers, it doesn't seem like he lives up to hype. But, Sal, the greatest thing a coach can do is win a Super Bowl. The second closest thing you can do is get to the Super Bowl. Jason yes. Garrett is a winning head coach all time, 51, 56% winning percentage. Mm -hmm. Kyle Shanahan doesn't have a high winning percentage, but he got to a Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. In all honesty, I'd rather be feast and famine than just consistently, you know, uh, moderately hungry. Mm. Like, let me feast what mm. Shanahan did, mm. and mm. now he's been famine. But in the NFL, you've been, you, you, never, you never went to the Super Bowl. I never went to the Super Bowl. You uh -huh. went to the playoffs three times, I believe, if I'm not three mistaken. Three times, yeah. Went to the playoffs three oh, times. three. I would have rather gone to a Super Bowl and gone 0-16 for the other three seasons mm. than been 10-6, and 6, went to the playoffs, 10-6, and 6, went to the playoffs, 6-9, mm. and 4-12. And and mm. Realistically speaking, yeah, going 10-6 was give me cool, that shot. but give me a shot. Let me get a and shot. And that's what Kyle Shanahan did. He yeah, gave me a shot. I, I give you that. I will say that. I like that. The fact that he went all the way out oh, so close, but at least he has that potential in him. I'm not trying to slander my man, but uh, I do have to push back on this article because – they try to use injuries as a reason, not as an excuse. When, when I played and, and the team was often injured or everyone was beat down or broke down, they would look at the coach. Like, how are you practicing these guys? How are you preparing these guys? Now, Shanahan has the same situation occur to him. Oh, well, he's had a stroke of bad luck. See, that likability gets into the play. I don't like that. Like Giannis. <laughs> Nobody like that.